the exhibitors and got some answers to your, to your questions. Um, I'd like to introduce you now to Connor Brown, who is the Global Head of Capital Strategy at Diageo. Um, long record of experience within the beverage industry with 20 years experience, um, but from the point of view of the discussion today, is going to chat about capital strategy and sustainability. Over to you, Connor. Okay. Uh, afternoon, everyone, uh, and welcome back from uh, lunch. Hope everybody's feeling suitably well fed. Uh, I have the honour of uh, energising you for the, uh, the next 20, 30 minutes, etc. So I've got that particular slot. Um, I actually presented at this event in, I think, 2013, Ronan, um, and we focused very much on energy efficient design, which was a big initiative with the SEAI uh, and the issue at the time. Um, this time, Ronan's asked me to talk uh, a, a bit more broader. Um, and take a more global perspective uh, on sustainability and hopefully you'll find us uh, just a different lens and, and hopefully something you'll uh, find beneficial. I'm going to share with you the Diageo uh, approach to sustaining its business through codifying uh, its capital management approach. So that's capital investment which from Diageo is about 600 million across our, across our business. Um, so over the next 20-30 minutes I'm hoping you're going to take away two themes uh, one is the importance of getting people, processes and plant in sync to allow us to deliver sustainable performance. Uh, and second of all, an underlying theme around uh, Ireland Inc. Uh, uh, and actually just an example of where the uh, uh, Ireland team, which uh, in the Diageo world, the central engineering team globally is based in uh, Dublin in Ireland. Um, and that's setting strategy for a global company like Diageo uh, and, and leading and influencing that agenda. And I think that's uh, an important message for Ireland as, as we look to the future around the role we can play in sustainability. Uh, it would be uh, inappropriate for me not just to give you an exact summary of Diageo. Hopefully you have uh, maybe enjoyed and sampled some of these products. Um, it is uh, one of the leading uh, beverage industry uh, companies in the world with the number one uh, stout, number one cream liqueur, number one uh, vodka, uh, number one um, uh, whiskey as well, in terms of Johnny Walker and some of the brands that you may know. We currently uh, uh, have products sold in over 180 countries. Uh, we produce in more than 200 sites or operations over 30 countries, some of them third parties, some of them wholly owned. Um, as an organization, very committed Diageo to efficient, the whole corporate social responsibility. It's a brand company and we take the whole CSR very seriously uh, and we're committed to efficient and sustainable production to the highest quality standards. I'm currently employing around, uh, with a recent acquisition uh, in India for a major company of around 33,000 people who are working to grow and nurture the business. So anybody who stands up with a slide that has a banner heading uh, excellence on it is possibly always setting up for a fall. So uh, I thought this title, this uh, quote from uh, a not uh, too indistinguished individual, Aristotle, was quite good when we talk about excellence. Uh, and it talks about, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is an act, not an act, but a habit. And I'm going to come back to that theme about habit as I talk through this capital strategy and effectively a global change program. One of the greatest challenges for our organization, uh, which has acquired different businesses over the years and has grown through acquisition, um, and in its own right is quite, quite a young company, because the brands like Guinness and Smirnoff and Johnny Walker, you know, but Diageo itself is actually the company that uh, brings them all together, is only about 15 years old. Um, and one of the big challenges is, is unlocking the experience uh, and sharing best practice quickly and efficiently across that organization. And I think that we can all relate to that. Anybody involved in a change program, whether at an individual site, multi-site, or at a global level, will recognize that's, that's quite a big challenge to get people and business in sync in terms of sharing knowledge and experience. Uh, and this is an important context when you roll out, or looking to roll out, a, a global, uh, consistent, sustainable approach to capital investment. Uh, I like the particular quote, it may be hard to see on your screen there, so I'll read it out. Um, that uh, about sharing experience, those who don't study history are doomed to repeat it, yet those who do study history are doomed to stand by helplessly while everyone else repeats it. 
uh, and uh, we're hoping to try and do neither of those uh, as part of our program rollout. So shared learning is key to an efficient, sustainable business. Um, I get the opportunity to travel uh, across uh, a number of our markets in Diageo and it never fails to amaze me about the similar challenges and experiences that all our people are facing, whether it's in Dublin or Douala or Shanghai or Sydney. It's the same issues been addressed by people just at different points on the journey and different points of their experience. So it's very key that without shared understanding, um, we will not have the productivity impact that our business needs and we'll have suboptimal business decisions made in relation to capital investment. And that affects specific capital, not just for environmental, but all capital investment. So just to start sharing with you what is the engineering excellence strategy. And like all strategies, it's actually relatively simple. Um, so this is our strategy for sustainable business. It covers six core areas, and it's informed by lots of experience of our suppliers, our businesses, and our engineers. Um, and those areas are safety, value, quality, sustainability, consistency, and innovation. Every capital investment in the ASU has now been informed and assessed against these six pillars. Whether it's at a portfolio level over three to five years, at a specific project approval level when a project is for approval, or when we're tendering and awarding contracts to our suppliers. They're all been assessed with the lens of those six pillars. If we're consistent in our approach, both in terms of rigor and decision making, across those six pillars, we believe we will create a very sustainable business platform for investment and for growth behind our brands. Ultimately, it's around driving value for Diageo and our shareholders. If we're not a profitable business, we're not sustainable. And we certainly can't invest in sustainable initiatives, specifically um, under sort of energy, water, and the challenges that we face across the business. I, I, I like the next slide just in terms of, uh, as I say, anybody that's involved in change programs hopefully can relate to, to, to that slide. Um, anyone who has led a global uh, management program will certainly have the experience when you try to share good practice, etc of people who are extremely busy and it's not relevant to them, etc. So our big message uh, to, uh, in rolling out consistent capital management across Diageo is to all our people, no matter where they are in the world, is please don't reinvent the wheel. Invest time ensuring you know what Diageo best practice processes are and try to effectively apply them. If you think you need to develop your own process, we suggest they haven't looked hard enough at the process in place. And I, I'm sure that's a, a, a theme that many of us experience. People look to find something. If they don't find a, a, a process to the challenge they face, they'll start investing from scratch how to approach it. Uh, and a lot of energy uh, and, and effort is lost in that. So I've talked about excellence being a habit earlier, or I should say Aristotle did. Um, what we have seen from this is um, Making a habit is fundamental to delivering a sustainable investment plan, making it a habit for our engineers, for our financial people, for our procurement colleagues, etc. We're working very, very hard uh, to make engineering excellence the DNA for Diageo capital management, no matter where you are in the world. That is actually the symbol there is meant to be a DNA symbol, in case anybody thinks it just looks like a ladder that has been uh, slightly badly damaged. Um, it is important that it's ingrained into the DNA of our people because if it doesn't become a habit uh, and we haven't changed people's attitude, then the behaviours won't change and the value and the opportunity will be lost. The strategy recognises also that the world continues to evolve. So if you look at that image there, you'll notice that the six areas I talked about, value, sustainability, safety, consistency, innovation, etc., have got sub-themes underneath them. And that's because at this moment in time, based on technology, based on where people are, and based on our processes, we can share a particular best practice. 
but in two, three years, when we all come and go and the organization moves on and technology moves on, that best practice should be then a habit, but the pillar will still be core. Uh, and maybe just to bring that to life a bit more, if I think of safety, 10 years ago, we've all had the experience of the uh, safety in cars. It was basically around, have you got a seatbelt on the front two seats, and are you wearing it? And we all saw the advertisements uh, for clunk click, and uh, we also saw guards and, and, and enforcement trying to get us to make sure we're wearing it. And that took time for it to become a habit. If you bought a car and you drive a car now, it is just a habit, a natural instinct to wear your seatbelt, front seats and back. However, safety in car design, in car purchase is still pivotal. The technology, the leading press practice has now moved on. It's NCAP rating, it's safety sensors, um, it's, it's automatic cars if you listen to, to what Google are working on, etc. So just to, that hopefully gives the example of the six pillars we talk about are core to capital investment for Diageo on all our investments. But the particular initiatives that are based on best practice at the moment, we are working to become a habit and they will continue to evolve as the years go by. So maybe now I just talk a little bit into the, the pillars themselves. Um, let's look at each one. And really in the time I have, I think it's just going to give you a flavour of some of the sort of key initiatives and the key themes that are under each pillar. Very happy to pick up over coffee or, or later on with anybody if there are specific questions or people want to get into a little bit more detail. Just looking then at safety. Construction is very critical when it comes to safety. It's probably the most dangerous time when we're doing a, a project in terms of the safety environment. But if you think about it, it's also setting the environment that we're all going to operate in for the people uh, post the project being complete. So the building of this fabulous stadium obviously was a very key construction project that would, would have it been done to very, very high safety standards. But there are people then going to operate and maintain this environment afterwards. And if that design hasn't been done efficiently, we are leaving a high risk for the operating environment for people in terms of safety going forward. So that's why none of the pillars are, are, are uh, all the pillars are equal, but one or some are more equal than others. I think that's a fairly standard way of looking at the world. And safety is very much front and center on any of our capital investment. We want anybody working on a project to go home safe, whether they're staff, contractor, anybody, every day. So what are the tangible initiatives that we're looking at under this particular pillar? Well, one of them is around a very rigorous global approved contractor program. We have different contractor systems around the world. We're moving to one platform. So if anybody wants to win business with the Azure, you will go through the same criteria and the same assessment. Because we want to work with companies who are like-minded, who have the same ambition and same leadership ambition, whether it's under safety or any of the other pillars. So there's a rigorous approved contractor process been rolled out, and a lot of investment going into our supplier engagement, including leagues of excellence, etc. Primarily based at this moment in time, the League of Excellence, on the safety performance. What are the other kind of themes that are on the pillar of safety? Well, we're working on leading edge behavioral safety uh, recording and reporting. So a lot of people and a lot of organizations are doing fantastic work on looking at lost time accidents. We're trying to move that from a construction and investment point of view into what are the leading behavioral uh, activities and data that we can influence decisions. And it's not just around recording data and information from anywhere in the globe. It's around using that to drive insights and interventions that avoid unsafe practices happening. And then just a few simple practical ones. It's amazing actually when you go to a construction site across Diageo, the diversity we've had in the past around the signage, the barriers, the protection. So we're moving to a place that if you go to any Diageo site, and I'll show a little video at the end of this, uh, the look and feel will be very consistent. So it's easy to talk about some of the big initiatives in Dublin here. There was 163, 168 million pound investment extension to St. James's Gate, done to very, very high safety standards. But one of the things we've done under the strategy is take those best practices of signage, safety, wayfinding, and transfer that. Uh, I just come back from Shelbyville, Louisville, uh, Louisville, from a Shelbyville distillery we're doing, and we're, we're putting in the same look and feel for those sites. So our contractors and our suppliers start seeing that we're looking to uh, operate to the same st standard no matter where you are in the world. So that's just some of the themes that are coming through under safety. 
second core area or pillar is around value. And the big challenge for our organization is, is how we can get our engineers and our, uh, our teams to move up the value chain. Most of our engineers are engineers and they want to be involved in the challenge of design and into the technical detail. But the real value for the business is around are we investing appropriately over the, uh, across, the, across the globe and are we doing the right projects and are we making sure we're working with the right suppliers and contractors to get best value for those investments. So the whole focus on the second pillar is around moving up that value chain. It's very interesting that we talked about uh, some practical examples earlier in, in terms of projects. Anybody putting a project in knows that once the contract is awarded, changes cost more money than prior to the contract being awarded. So if you can get as much design built in, whether it's from a sustainable point of view, or safety point of view, or other area, pre-contract award, you can unlock best commercial value for, for your organization. So as part of that journey, sort of three tangible things we're doing is to actually move the organization to have robust three-year plans. Looking at a portfolio investment that looks at how much are we spending on innovation, how much are we spending on capacity, how much are we spending on compliance and maintain current output, how much are we spending on sustainability, and how does that portfolio of expenditure best deliver both the business performance, the return on investment, and our, our ambition in terms of corporate social responsibility. And if we have those conversations earlier, we're then able to have a much bigger impact in choosing which projects to do, whether it's supporting uh, environmental, water, energy efficient design projects, or safety initiatives. And get the balance right between return on investment and projects that need to be done to sustain the business. Another key practical thing is all our business papers now are assessed against these six pillars. So every project, it's not as though we have putting projects up that are, these are only environmental. Every project gets assessed in terms of environmental impact. So it's very easy for us to, to look at uh, working with our sites and our operations and say we need new refrigeration and we should do variable speed drives, etc. We're now saying any project that's going in, the environmental impact needs to be assessed and the decision, decision makers need to make informed judgments around whether they want to do more in terms of putting uh, sustainability into it or not. And again, at a portfolio level, then you can choose to see whether you want to do it under an individual project or invest better in another country and another market. And the third area under value is around technology standardization. This is a big challenge for, for our organization because we've grown and hit over the years and we have a broad range of different equipment and suppliers. But there is a big focus to move on established developed markets to standard equipment and standard suppliers giving that equipment so we can get best value and we think that's order of magnitude 10 to 15 percent and accelerated delivery in terms of project time frame. Too many times we're doing projects putting packaging lines in, breweries in, bridge plants or, or any of these plants, environment ETP plants, uh, effluent treatment plants and we seem to start from scratch every time and start, and start of saying at a portfolio level we know we're going to do five ETP plants across a particular market or across the globe. Let's agree now the solution, let's agree the commercial terms and we roll that out with greater pace. So those are some practical examples of what we're doing under under value. The third pillar covers quality. And this is an interesting example in terms of learning from other industries. Um, many of you, if you're involved in, in projects, will, will often hear the, the project people say, people only ask for what they want, only ask to tell you what they want after you've installed what you, they asked for. Uh, people are not quite good at saying what they want. Originally, you build something and then they come back with all these great bills after the event. We looked across the business to see what was best practice, and actually it wasn't great across Diageo, so we were all in a similar place. So we looked outside the industry, and we ended up going to the pharmaceutical industry. Um, and we saw they had a stage gate program called validation. Many of you, if, if you deal with the pharmaceutical industry, will know they have to do that from a sort of FDA regulatory perspective. We didn't want that, that level of bureaucracy and paperwork wasn't appropriate to our business, but we did like the stage gate approach. So now we adopt validation on all our projects. And that basically means all our stakeholders doing an investment actually agree upfront what success looks like at every stage of the project. And that's written in advance of that stage and delivered. So you don't get to the installation and somebody saying, I expected this to happen. You don't go to pre delivery inspection and inspect and, and people saying, I thought we were going to do a different test. So that's been a very, very powerful platform for us to drive consistency in terms of getting the projects right first time 
And as part of that validation programme, we track each of the pillars. What are we doing in terms of safety? How are we designing in safety protocols? What are we doing in terms of sustainability? Are we building in, challenging the design from a sustainability point of view? Have we agreed that the next phase will, will sign that off? Have we put the appropriate metering into a project? The answer may not always be yes, we have, but we're making sure that the decision, uh, stakeholders are aware of the decision and understand the impact by following this validation program. I'll just give you one other example of for a major investment we did, which is maybe uh, uh, just to bring it to life again in terms of the quality agenda. When we were doing this in James's Gate Brewery, um, the challenge was, well, our operating teams, our site will be ring-fenced, a brewery will be built over 12, 13, 14 months, and then the gates are open and people have to go in and try and operate it. How do we engage with people in better in terms of what they're going to receive, more than just getting drawings and documents and presentations? So we took the concept of a show house, show apartment, and we said, why don't we do that at, for an industrial site? So we effectively built a, a mock plant of what the final installation would be like. Now, obviously, for you, only if you've been around a brewery, you're not going to put in massive steel vessels. But we did segue, sections of it. We showed the tiling, the flooring, the finish, all the area, not just bits of plants sitting around a room, but showing how it was going to be constructed. So that was a very powerful way to tangibly show how a finished project would look from the, the user's perspective. It also worked very, very well from a quality point of view for our suppliers and our subcontractors, because when they got their subcontractors in to finish the tiling and connect up and, 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 and finish, do finishes up to vessels or equipment, they realized the gaps weren't right, the grouting wasn't right, they were able to do spill tests on the tiles, etc., and realize actually this isn't going to work. So that was a very useful tool. You would not do that, obviously, in every project, because you have to invest a bit of money on it. But on a major project, it acts very, very well in terms of the quality agenda. I'm on two minutes. I've got six, four, four pillars to do in two minutes, so my timing is not very good here. OK, uh, sustainability is a pillar in its own right. Um, uh, making, and this is really around making more for less. Uh, the big insight for this is that all energy initiatives uh, are great in terms of the site, but you will hit a point where all the low-hanging fruit have been delivered and you're then going back looking to capital to actually do retrofit on, on your plant and equipment, and we find this across our business. And the challenges from a capital investment point of view is the payback on a lot of the water and environmental projects are five, six, seven, eight years, and you're competing with a new product investment, which is going to give you a 60, 80, 80 month payback. So that's why we're very keen to adopt energy efficient designs. This has been developed with the Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland. Uh, um, and the national standards of Ireland, and we, we uh, were fairly instrumental in adopting it and, and shaping that agenda with another number of other uh, consulting companies. Um, so energy efficient design is currently the big program we're trying to roll out across all capital investment. Um, and that allows stakeholders to decide as a project going ahead, do they want to spend money out of contingency to build in uh, energy or water efficiencies do they want to raise, go for further capital funding, um, or do they just want to design the plant as easily as possible for least cost retrofit? Uh, and one of the challenges we have is project managers quite often sit there saying there's no very tight time scale, having the budget, so I'm not going to spend much time doing energy efficiency. This process forces the project manager and the team to actually discuss that with the project approvers and make sure it's a business decision, not an individual decision. So just pillar five and then pillar six, and then I'll, I'll take you just to a bit of a wrap through. So consistency, the whole program is based around a consistent approach, a consistent user experience, etc., and really around reinventing the wheel. So we've set up one set of performance standards across our business for capital investment. And it's an interesting question in terms of how do you measure good capital investment? We have to go, we go into a country like Turkey where we have six or seven plants the team there are doing fantastic work, but how do you measure they're getting good return on investment? Is it payback? Is it percentage NSV? Are they doing the right balance of innovation projects? Are they doing the right balance of environmental? And this is an area that's been really tough to, to try and define, but we've set a set of performance measures based on the six pillars that all capital investment is, is, a set, against, is set against. We define a clear set of standards that need to be achieved to allow those performance measures to, uh, to materialize, and we've supported that with clear processes that allow people to go in and say, here, here do I, how do I actually achieve the standard? The only other comment I'd make about consistency is we've engaged with all our suppliers 
and have created a, a one platform, so there's an internet-based system that anywhere in the globe can go in and see who's approved, and here's, how, here's, how the, here's what the standards are, here's how you measure performance, etc. And that's a very important platform for us to accelerate the rollout and communication of this consistent uh, strategy for capital investment. The final one is innovation, uh, and this is a challenging one to look at. It means different things for different people. We have landed on three core themes under engineering for innovation as part of capital investment. One is to do capital projects that support new products, fairly standard. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's market-led, consumer-led, and how can we deliver those new projects as quickly and as fast as possible. The second one is around how we can be innovative in our capital solutions. And you may not be able to see it there, but in the, in the lower image on that slide, uh, you'll see a containerized solution. And many of you will have seen fridge plants and water treatment oro plants, etc., uh, across Ireland and many sites brought in on skid-mounted and containered solutions. This was the first time an entire distilling process and packaging line was put into five containers and launched into Mozambique, uh, a market that we had no, part, we had no presence in before. And in the past, to, to been able to enter that market probably would have cost us 10, 15 million. And we were able to do this for three, three and a half million. And we were able to launch a whole new, and, and open up a whole new market. And that was the engineering community finding a solution to a business need. So that's the second thing, right? Innovative capital solutions. And then the third area is around commercializing new technology. And how does our engineering community and our capital investment plan uh, unlock new technology and commercialize it as quickly as possible? And if people have seen the widget it can over the years. It's gone from fixed widget to floating widgets, that kind of stuff. That was taking the technology from a very different space, uh, injection molding plastic, and putting it into initiate cans of Guinness, which is an example. I'm probably going to have Connor disconnect me a good amount of seconds, so I'll, uh, I wanted to talk about people a little bit. Um, and fundamentally, we've talked about some of the processes, we've talked about some of the standards. Uh, ultimately, it's down to people. Uh, if we can influence people and engage with people so that they have the right attitude and behavior, then we can really make engineering excellence and a, a consistent uh, approach to capital investment. We can make it a habit. Um, I was going to show a little video at this stage um, just to sort of bring what is pioneers of excellence to life. Uh, I just make a comment that if you have a chance to go onto YouTube and look at the building of the Golden Gate Bridge in the 1920s, uh, it's a fantastic little grainy black and white video that shows one individual taking a leadership role. Um, in those days, it was a 35 million pound investment, and in those days, iron workers, the cost of the rule of thumb was for every million, somebody lost their life. Um, and this was going to be a 35 million investment, so it was going to be 35 people died building the Golden Gate Bridge. And the, in, the individual in the photograph there, Richard Strauss, took a very strong stance. First person to put in hard hats, first person to put in harnesses and fire uh, steel workers for not wearing them. And if any of you remember those iconic images of uh, America of people on, on, on steel having their lunch out and uh, hanging over hundreds of feet in the air, that's not an easy audience to influence. Um, so we use that as an example of as an individual who took a stance. That project was delivered uh, in record time for 35 million and not one fatality. One of the things he did was he put a net onto the entire bridge. But I'm, 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 I'm stealing the thunder of that video, so when you have a moment, I would suggest watch it. Uh, but it's very important that we engage with our people and we kind of use that to show uh, internal role models and external role models. So this all sounds very interesting, hopefully, um, but does it work? Well, we have internal performance measures that we've put in place, and we definitely see greater consistency and greater performance in terms of capital investment, both in terms of getting more for the money and delivering solutions faster. We have looked at you know, bringing in external consultants to see, but is that best in class? You can go to the Deloitte's and the Ernst & Young and you know, I'm sure engage them for for, uh, for substantial fees to come back and show us how we compare. We are a brand company and one of the routes we've chosen to, to, to establish what is good practice and benchmark is to use reward, is to use uh, recognition and awards. So I'm just going to quickly run through an example. There's a safety award recently, Diageo won a DuPont EMEA award for safety. Um, and that allows us to go out to different parts of the world and show this is good practice. It's not us saying it, it's externally validated. And it's an efficient way and a very powerful way to compel people to say to sit up and listen. Uh, but it also means we're not spending a huge amount of time doing benchmark data, which is quite difficult to get from different uh, competitive companies. Another example would be uh, under the sustainability pillar. Uh, the St. James Gate Brewery was the first 
largest uh, brewery in the world to receive both dual lead platinum and bream. Um, and that was hugely uh, influenced by the energy efficient design program that was developed for the SEI and that was implemented on it. We talked about the people. Example here as one of our project managers who did a project in Ethiopia, which you'll see the video, um, actually was shortlisted and won the top award with the British Safety Council for uh, being a leader in, in safety in terms of capital delivery. And we're also very keen, where possible, to help influence that what, is, what we say is our standard becomes a national standard because that allows us to influence other parts of our DSU business to, to adopt this. So that's an example where the uh, IS399 is now a national standard, for, I'm sure you're aware, for energy efficient design uh, and the edge was part of influencing that. So in a whirlwind stop, and I, I know I've kicked a touch a couple of times, Connor, so you will build the plug in a minute. We've talked about performance measures at a Diageo level across plan, source, make, move. I've shared with you the six standards uh, around safety value consistency. We have assurance programs in place, and that's driving business performance. And the whole codification is then detailed processes behind that that ensure people anywhere in the world can understand how do we actually achieve those standards. And then based on that, that allows us to assess a market in terms of its maturity and offer support in terms of capital investment. So it's really around embedding engineering and uh, uh, excellence and evolving together. And just to finish off, I just play a short video which is uh, part of the message we use to people, as Frank Snatter said, if I can make it here, I can make it anywhere. This is an example of a project done in Ethiopia, uh, which was deploying the engineering excellence standards and covered all these six pillars in a very, uh, in a very challenging market. So then I think I just pressed play here, do I?
Thank you for listening.